Hi, I'm Jake Eisenacker, Applications Engineer here at Vortec Products. I'm Zach Miner, Sales Engineer here at Vortec Products. Today we will be discussing our line of cold air guns. In this video, we'll go over what a cold air gun is, the benefits of cold air guns, the difference between a cold air gun and a cold air gun system. We will also take a closer look into the different types of cold air guns offered by Vortec products, how one can mount a cold air gun, the different flow parameters between each cold air gun, typical applications that one might see with cold air guns, unboxing a cold air gun, and general maintenance requirements for cold air guns. So Jake, what exactly is a cold air gun? A cold air gun is a versatile tool that runs off 100% compressed air. There's no refrigerants or additives needed to uh, provide cold air flow um, out of the nozzles. Um, it's great for uh, providing sub-zero temperatures to a tool or a product as it's uh, being machined or uh, being worked on. And it's a very sleek design. It's not too bulky or um, too, too large. All right, Jake, what are some of the benefits of the cold air guns? Uh, you know, there's quite a few, I would say. Uh, the first is it's dry and clean, um, so you won't have to worry about uh, oil or lubrication getting sprayed all over um, a working device. Um, it's very user-friendly with the adjustable knob. Um, you know, you can vary that cold air temperature if it's a special material that you're cutting and requires more cooling or not. Um, it's compact. Uh, you know, it's, it's not too bulky for being a... a cooling device um, and there's some added benefit with the remnant remnant removal as you're using the devices and blowing off say uh, chips from a machine um, those chips will be removed from your workpiece and provide a, a clean surface to work off of so our cold air guns are offered as a cold air gun individually as well as with a system the system includes a magnetic base a compressed air filter and the cold air gun and nozzle so Jake, now that we know what the system are versus the guns, tell us some about tell us a little bit about the features and the benefits of what we're looking at in front of us. Yeah, so there's a couple of different things going on here. Um, we've got the frost-free nozzle, uh, we've got a standard single point nozzle, and we've got a dual nozzle. Um, additionally, like you mentioned, we have a magnetic base, so any nearby uh, metal surfaces that can support the cold air guns. Um, the cold air guns also come with a knob on the back side to allow for temperature variability and allow users to change the cold uh, fraction kind of on the fly as they're uh, machining or cooling a process or a product down. Okay, so Jake, now that we know what a cold air gun is and the difference between a cold air gun and a system, let's talk about some of the individual cold air guns that we offer here at Vortec as well as some of the benefits and features. Sure. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to start here on the uh, right side here. We've got our two mini cold air guns. The first one is a dual uh, point or du dual nozzle mini cold air gun. And the second one here is a single point uh, mini cold air gun. Both of these will consume eight CFM. They are non-adjustable and they will produce again sub-zero temperatures. Um, good for small applications or uh, places where we are in tight fit and we don't want any adjustability. Um, and it will provide cooling at a constant rate and temperature. Uh, these three right here are our cold air guns. Um, we've got these in 15s, 25s, and 35 CFMs. Uh, just like the mini cold air guns, we've got a dual nozzle, uh, we've got a single point nozzle, and then we've got this frost free. All of these models come with uh, a sleek design um, and a knob on the back side for adjustability. Um, they are offered with magnetic base just like the mini cold air guns. Um, a good feature here is a uh, built-in muffler that's inside of the sleeve here uh, to get us, get us below the OSHA requirements, um, keep it a, a quiet um, tool. Uh, the frost-free nozzle, for instance, is, is a good for humid applications uh, where condensation might be an issue. Um, you know, if it's, say, uh, very hot environment or near a machine, maybe a CNC machine, this might be a good option. Um, the standard nozzle for any just basic applications, a drill press or assisting a uh, operator in a machining process, 
And the dual nozzle is good for if we're trying to hit both sides of a product, um, you know, increase the cooling and, and uh, give us some versatility there. Um, again, all offered with magnetic bases. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So, Jake, let's say an end user comes to us and says they don't have enough space to attach the magnetic base to. What are some other options for mounting? Sure. Uh, yeah, so the inlet here is a quarter of an inch, so users could easily plumb or fabricate something in-house to hold the cold air gun. Um, typically on CNC machines or uh, CNC routers, uh, end users will um, attach this directly to uh, the cutting tool or the spindle um, and use the nozzle to target the, uh, the tool or the plate of which we are cutting. Um, they are pretty lightweight, so you won't have to worry about it pulling down or weighing down on, on a surface. But again, it's a quarter of an inch uh, if you choose not to use the magnetic base, and uh, you can purchase this, just the cold air gun if you need to. Um, you had mentioned some different CFMs, 8, 15, 25, and 35. What are the differences when, when a customer comes to us? How do, how do they kind of gauge where they need that to be? Sure. Um, so it, it's going to primarily depend on how cold we need the output temperature as well as the amount of cooling capacity that we'd need. Um, obviously, the 8s will be good for um, places where we don't need a ton of cold air, whereas the 35 is good for places where we need high cooling capacity. Maybe it's a rough metal or rough steel that we are machining. Um, so with the adjustability, you can have sub-zero temperatures. Um, or you can increase the temperature and get a lot of flow or volume coming out of the cold air gun. So it's really gonna depend on the um, application at hand. Um, you're more than welcome to give us a call and we can help size this correctly. Um, the 25 is a good starting place. And if we find that we need more or less cooling, um, we can easily swap out the generator or uh, we can put a pressure regulator to regulate the amount of uh, flow and pressure that we're consuming with a cold air gun. Perfect. And you mentioned a little bit about some of the applications um, that we're going to see these in, but mention a little bit more about what common applications we see majority of these guns used for. Sure, yeah, it's, uh, it's anything for repeated cooling. Um, so typically we might see these on drill presses, um, lathes, CNC machines, routers, and, and uh, other various horizontal or vertical CNC machines. Um, again, really, it's any place we're trying to target cooling and provide one specific location of cooling or cold airflow um, to either cool a tool or cool a uh, working uh, device or a, a product as we are machining or um, uh, applying some sort of process to it. When you purchase a cold air gun or a cold air gun system from us, it's going to come in a box like this. We're going to go the, through the unboxing and the mounting and adjustment points that the cold air gun takes. So inside the box, you're gonna have a cold air gun. You're gonna have your magnetic mounting base, as well as either a single or a dual nozzle. The cold air gun will simply just screw into the magnetic base. And the nozzle will screw onto the end. Once both are in place, you can now attach your compressed air line and begin using the cold air gun. If you need to adjust either the flow or the temperature of the cold air gun, the back of it offers a knob where you can simply just turn it to adjust your flow or your temperature to your desired needs. What, uh, what parts typically need to be maintained or upkept when a customer is purchasing one of these to ensure the longevity of the life of the cold air gun. Sure. As far as uh, maintenance is concerned with cold air guns, there's no moving parts. The knob does move, but besides that, no moving parts or refrigerants in this. Um, so besides cleaning, um, there's really not any maintenance needed. You can replace the nozzle if it becomes worn out. Um, but besides that, there's no real maintenance done on these items. So Jake, if a customer comes to us and only buys the cold air gun and they're running directly through their compressed air line into the cold air gun, you would mentioned that some of the problems can occur inside with the generator going bad. Why would that happen? 
Yeah, so we, we strongly encourage and sell the use of inline filters um, to get the most optimal cooling capacity. We need dry and clean compressed air. Um, in the event that, say, oil or dirt has entered your compressed air line or you choose not to use a uh, compressed air filter, uh, you'd want to pop the cold air gun open um, and swap out the generator, clean any sort of debris or remnants that might be found inside of the device, uh, and then reassemble. Uh, we've got a good YouTube video here uh, that can help walk you through breaking the unit down, replacing the generator, and uh, assembling it back together. Um, on that note, we do sell generators uh, separately, um, so you could change the Kool-Aid capacity or you could uh, replace a damaged uh, generator inside of the unit. Hi, my name is Steve Brumman. I'm an engineer at ITW Air Management. Today I'm going to show you how to disassemble a 610-1 cold air gun to replace or to inspect the generator and change it if it needs changing. There's a procedure in the instructions that come with the unit that shows the breakdown of the cold air gun. Um, I'm not going to follow that procedure step by step, but I will show you firsthand on what you need to do. First, you'll need a pin type spanner wrench, a 9 16 wrench, a ratchet with a 1 inch deep well socket, and a uh, hex key, a 50 thousandths hex key. First thing we need to do is with the spanner wrench, remove the aluminum cap on the end. Simply unscrew with the spanner wrench and remove the aluminum cap and the black flexible nozzle all in one piece. With that, there should be a black o-ring that stays on the cap. Next, you want to slide the cold air muffler out. And if you'll notice, one end of the muffler, there's a thick cross section. On the other end of the muffler, there's a thin cross section. When you reassemble it, the thin cross section will go in first. Underneath that, there's a thin section of ring that you'll need to remove. Just fell out. After that, you'll take your 50,000 hex key and remove the adjustment knob at the end. Simply remove or unscrew the uh, set screw there. Pull the knob off. And next step is to remove the compressed air inlet with a 916 wrench. Simply unscrew that, that will fall out, and at that point you can remove the uh, internal vortex tube from the blue sleeve. What you need to do next is take the brass compressed air inlet that you just removed and screw it into the body of the vortex tube, and with your ratchet, unscrew the Brass cold cap here, remove the cold cap, remove the generator and the o-ring, and at this point if you're simply replacing the generator with the same size generator because the old generator is worn or dirty, what you'll need to do is uh, inspect the slots in the generator. If they are worn or dirty, simply discard it or clean that generator or discard it and replace it with a different generator. Or if you want to increase the cooling capacity of the generator or the cold air gun, then what you'll want to do is purchase a new generator kit. What I'm doing now is I'm taking out the 15 CFM generator and replacing it with the 25 CFM generator, which is blue in color. So what you do is drop the generator into the cavity in the vortex tube put the small o-ring on top of it, put the brass cold cap on top of that, and screw it in place. And you'll want to torque that brass cold cap to at least 100 inch pounds torque. Once you've done that, you'll want to remove the compressed air inlet, slide the vortex tube main body back into the blue sleeve. You'll notice there's three holes on the blue sleeve. You want to line up the compressed air inlet on the vortex tube 
with the largest hole in the blue sleeve. So you slide it in place, line up that hole, is so, screw the compressed brass compressed air inlet fitting back in and tighten it. Reattach the knob on the end. You'll notice there's a flat on the stem, the valve stem. You'll line up the set screw with that flat on the valve stem and then simply tighten the set screw with your 50 thousandths hex key. At that point, the hot end of the tube is pretty much complete. You'll want to put the thin section of the ring into the blue sleeve. Make sure it drops to the bottom of the blue sleeve so that it's laying flat on top of the vortex tube. After that, you'll take the muffler assembly and again with the thin section of the muffler assembly going in first, insert it into place. At that point you can then screw on the aluminum cap with the black flexible nozzle. And Tighten that down with your pin type spanner wrench. And it's done. So if you're interested in a cold air gun, please visit our website at vortech.com. On there you will find a cold air gun selector, which you should be able to easily navigate to help you to determine which cold air gun is the one to fit your needs. If you're not finding exactly what you're looking for on the selector, please feel free to call in and discuss your application in more detail with our applications engineers. They will be able to direct you to the correct cold air gun for your application.